This is code.org. Let's take a look at the Photo Liker app. I'm going to go ahead and hit run here. And let's see. Up. Ooh. Ah. Uh, cool. And so that's some live interaction happening, obviously. Oh, sure. All right. Awesome. Or wow. <laughs> Boom. Oh, look. It adds it to a new line and it keeps the old stuff, right? So, yes. That's pretty neat. All right. Let's see what we need to do. I want to take a look at the activity guide. These are always helpful and kind of uh, see how we can get started laying out this application. Write the code to make a photo like our app, okay? You've already been given every scene element and have comments that will help you design your program. Yes, right? So on this next part, that's where we're going to be doing that. Now, discuss with your partner, what does this app do? Well, what does it do? I, we just talked about it some, right? You can click the buttons and likes go up. You can also write and click the comment button and that will grab this text, maybe a git text and push it out there. Uh, what are the inputs? Oh, so inputs would be these buttons, right? We're inputting some type of information. The computer's changing how many likes there are. And then I think input would also be maybe this text box. What is a piece of information that might store a variable? Ooh, I would assume since there's a number for likes that changes, how else would they track that but without a variable? Maybe the comments too, I would think. Fill in the information in the table for each event handler. So I won't walk through all of these, but definitely to get you started here. Now an event handler is that stuff, that thing that you interact with when something goes on within an app. So I can show you. So as an example, Here's our event handler. This one's for the up button I have and on click. So fill in the information you'll need. Um, and what I did is, oh yeah, the ID of the up button is up button. So element ID up button, description of what this event handler will do. Well, what I need it to do is increase the likes when it is clicked. So I have it play a sound. I use a likes variable and then I need to set the text. I would also point out this part of it. You want to use a string. You want to use words and quotes to make sure this word likes is printed before the value of the variable. Regardless, let's go back here. And so what does it do? Um, updates a variable to in and uh, well maybe and then outputs the amount of likes on the screen. Right, so there's an example of the up button. Now think about the down button, think about the comment button. What's that doing? Well, it's on event. You want to get the ID, which you can kind of see there. So when it is clicked, what happens? And you want to describe what's actually occurring. When you click the comment button, as long as you have text, what's going on? And that's what you would be doing here. Variable names. I already said I think there's going to be a like uh, variable, right? Because how else are we keeping track of that? And another variable you're going to want to think about is how are we storing the information when the user enters stuff, right? So I don't think that's magic. Think about where else we could use variables that it seems like data is being uh, moved around, is being saved, and then is being pushed back out. Okay. And, oh, cool. Well, this one was kind of faster than some others. Note, though, too, the IDs, I didn't even see this. Look how helpful that is, are right there. So while you're doing this, element IDs are right there. When you think about variables, definitely think about those inputs and outputs. What do the inputs change and what do they push out to the screen? Because that oftentimes can give away a variable. So once you have this planned out, we're going to be ready to start our app. And I'm excited to do so. Onward.